Hi, everyone. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, as I mentioned last week, this week, our guest of honor is uh, Justin Stevens, owner of Stevens Tax Services. Uh, Justin and I got to know each other through a networking group um, here that we have in uh, Santa Rosa. He offers tax services. So I thought it would be a good idea to invite him on to answer some of the questions that we usually have in our community, specifically immigrants. Um, uh, Justin, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, but yeah, yeah as uh, Talaya said, my name is Justin Stevens. I own Stevens Tax Services. We've been in business since 1983, started by my dad, uh, Lee Stevens, originally. And um, we serve about 2,200 clients um, in Sonoma County and all over, actually all over the world. I've got international clients and all of that stuff as well. Wow. So so yeah, lots of people uh, that we help out. <laughs> yes, perfect. Um, I I remember one of your presentations, Justin, and that really, um, that it was so inspiring, just your whole story in general and how you got into, into taxes. Oh, thank you. Um, so we'll get into our uh, our questions here. How do taxes work in California? Um, I'm always hearing that it's more expensive to live here. I have not lived anywhere else in the U.S., so like taxes here is all I know. Uh, mm -hmm. But can you explain a little bit about how does it work here in California? Yeah. Yeah, that's it's a great question because, uh, as I said, I have clients all over the nation, so I do run into a lot of different states' taxes. And uh, if California is not the highest percentage, <laughs> then we're very close. Um, I don't know if there's other states that are higher, but our top tax rate. This is for people that are, you know, have incomes that are over six hundred something thousand dollars a year, but our highest tax rate is about thirteen percent, thirteen point three to be exact, and. Um, but most people fall into about the 9% uh, category of taxes, which is high. Um, there are states out there like Nevada, Texas, Washington that don't have state tax. So what I mean by the 9.3% is what when you hit that tax bracket, some of your income is charged. You, you have to pay an extra 10% or almost 10% on top of the federal taxes that you're already paying. Um, so it is a bracketed system. So it just it does depend on your income. Um, but in lower income, you pay a little bit lower tax rate, uh, all the way down to zero, uh, up to that 9.3 ish percent um, for most people. Mm. Uh, but yeah, like I said, there are some other states that don't have state tax at all, or uh, that have much lower rates. Some do kind of a flat rate. Um, so it really just depends. But we are, it's expensive to live here. Yeah. We have nice weather and we get, we have to pay for it. <laughs> so I've been uh, joking a lot about this, but I was like, I feel like we pay for the weather and like how yeah. nice it is here. Um, yeah. Like, you know what, I'll I'll pay for, for, for taxes here. No problem. <laughs> I kind of feel the same way. I mean, I was yeah. born and raised here in Sonoma County, and I've always lived in California, and I, I don't think I'd ever leave. I just love it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you haven't left California either? Correct. Yeah. I've only okay. lived here. I, I used to live in Sacramento, the Sacramento area, which was much hotter, um, but but yeah. I'm still nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I love Sonoma County. Yes. Um, I feel like we're spoiled with, you know summer days and cool nights so yep. yeah yeah right, across, right down from the beach and <laughs> all of right, that right right yeah yeah um as an immigrant what i noticed was when we move here a lot of us have to have more than one job like two three jobs i've come across the time where i've had to have four jobs to sure, be yeah. to make ends meet and more mm -hmm. and then i've had a lot of people ask me questions like how come my deductions are not the same meaning the amount that is taken out of our paychecks um it's not right. the same across like say if someone held two jobs it was the deductions weren't the same as in you know like i said the amount that is being taken out do yeah. you so is it supposed to be that way um, or is it not? If it's supposed to, if it's not supposed to be that way, what would be the right thing to do there? Or how, what can we do to make the deductions the same? Yeah, this, that, that's a little tricky. Um, I find that a lot of times that people who have multiple jobs end up owing money at the end of the year 
Because what will happen is, let's say you have a job where you make $50,000 in a year and it's consistent. That's the only job you have. So you go to your W-4, which is, you know, how you have taxes withheld, how you how you set that to do. And you select that you're a single person with one job and that's it. They will take out of that $50,000 wage the appropriate amount of taxes to cover the whole year. Mm. So they'll, they'll take that out and it'll be fine. And then at the end of the year, you'll probably break even, maybe get a little bit of a refund, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Well, if you have instead, you have four jobs that make up that $50,000 One is taking out taxes on $20,000 worth of income. The other is taking out taxes on $10,000 of the income. The other one's taking out another 10, you know, so smaller chunks. That job thinks that they're the only ones. They don't know about all your other jobs. So they're going to take out less taxes on the lower pay than Mm -hmm. on the higher pay. Because in a perfect world, those W-4s are going to get you right on the money for how much money you're making. So right. you be able to take out the exact amount of tax, not getting a refund, not owing much. You want to just kind of be right on that line. Mm-hmm. And so that's what is the advantage of having the one job. Now, it's not to say that you can't do that with W-4s. Um, you just have to make sure that you're taking additional amounts withheld. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I have a great example. There's a a, a traveling nurse that I work with that uh, does a lot of different states and stuff too. And we have to adjust every year just about for um for her different um uh, income levels and we have to put extra amounts withheld on her w-4 in order to compensate for some of those smaller jobs that she has Mm -hmm. so um so yeah that's that it's tricky it's uh, but it's and it's a it's a little bit of a game (laughs) that Mm -hmm. you have to just make sure to be on top of. yeah i remember filing taxes one one year and um i was left owing even though both of my jobs my there were you know taxes being taken out of my paycheck mm-hmm. so what i did the following year i ended up i added um like you said an additional amount yep. and i kind of just guessed like my amount <laughs> sure. so yeah. that i don't have to cuz i didn't want to left uh, be left owing right the, year um do you suggest would you suggest doing that or like taking extra out and then just getting a refund at the end of the year yeah i i tell people all the time that uh, i refunds are great because you get money coming back to you and everybody's Mm -hmm. always like yay i got a refund right (laughs) nobody likes owing money but but really a refund is just paying you back too much money that you put in Mm -hmm. so you're giving the government an interest-free loan (laughs) essentially for the whole year so if your refund's too high, I usually recommend scaling it back. But yeah, the same thing. So it can be pretty simple if you have stable jobs from year to year. You could say, okay, I owed $1,200 this year on my taxes, so I need to make up $1,200. Well, how do I do that? Well, you go and you divide however many paychecks you have. So let's say you get paid biweekly. So that'd be 26 paychecks mm-hmm. in a year. Um, and then you take 1200 divided by 26. And then you add that amount to your additional amount withholding. So you get that right on the money. Yeah. So said than done, because if you have a lot of jobs then, or, or if you have a lot of W-2s that you get or anything like that, then it can be a little bit tricky to balance year to year. Mm-hmm. But that would mostly be for uh, people who are somewhat consistent. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. See, I didn't do that. I just like did that. I just guessed a number and put that additional amount. In I, know, my- I make it seem I make it seem easy, but I know without knowing about it, what you don't right. know. What to do. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. And those W fours are no. My next question was, um, can you please explain the difference between a ten ninety nine employee and a W two employee? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, they're very very different because a ten ninety nine person isn't an employee, they're an independent contractor. And so when it comes to taxes, uh, the employer um, sends you, if you're an employee, you get a W-2 at the end of the year. If you're an independent contractor, uh, you get a 1099. And the difference is the W-2 has taxes taken out as we've been talking about. So they're gonna take out social security tax, they're gonna take out Medicare tax, those two things are going towards your social security and reti- uh, retirement basically later in life, uh, we hope. <laughs> yeah. uh, and there's also federal and state income taxes that are taken out of that when you're a W-2 employee. Well, when you're an independent contractor, that means you work for yourself essentially. So even though a company is paying you, they don't take any of that stuff out. 
So in that case, who's responsible for paying that stuff? You <laughs> are 100%. When you're employed, the employer pays half of your Social Security and Medicare for you. Most people don't realize that because it just gets taken out of their checks. <laughs> but when you're self-employed, you have to do that yourself. Mm. So you report those 1099, uh, um, in, that 1099 income on your personal taxes in its entirety, and then you have to pay all your own taxes on it. Mm. And if you don't do quarterly taxes, then you end up owing a bundle a lot of times mm -hmm. at the end of the year. So it's important to plan for that. Mm -hmm. One other big difference is W-2 employees cannot take any sort of work expense deductions, whereas 1099 people can. So a good good example would be if you're a caretaker taking care of somebody uh, as a W-2 employee, um, you're driving back and forth maybe to their house, or maybe you have multiple people that you're taking care of that you go uh, back and forth to. Mm -hmm. None of that mileage is deductible. But right. if you're a 1099 independent contractor, you can deduct a percentage of all of that mileage mm -hmm. along with supplies and your cell phone bill and a whole bunch of other, there's a variety of things that you can deduct depending on your job. Uh, home office uh, also when you're a 1099 independent contractor so there's kind of, it's kind of a double edged sword taxes are a little bit higher when you're a 1099 uh, person because you have to pay all that social security and medicare tax we were talking about but you get to deduct a lot of things so mm -hmm. you can lower your total income by quite a bit got so, it yeah and would you recommend like with 1099 um to keep your bill down to do quarterly taxes instead of waiting till tax season or end of the yeah. year yeah it's kind of like it's one of those one of those things like i was saying we want to try to be right on the money so you're not owing a whole bunch but you're not right. giving the government a big loan you know um but um at the same time if you owe more than a thousand dollars and then the next year you end up owing two thousand and then the next year you end up owing three thousand or However, that goes, you if you don't pay quarterlies, you will end up paying a small penalty that's included on mm -hmm. your taxes that most people don't even see. But it could be thirty dollars, it could be a couple hundred dollars, depending on how much you owe. So you avoid that penalty by paying quarterly taxes. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so with the industry and a little background from my end, I come from the caretaking or caregiving industry. Mm -hmm. Before I became a W-2 em employee where I had an employer, mm -hmm. I was also a caregiver that was paid privately, meaning by cash or by check. Right, so right. I wasn't necessarily a 1099 employee and I was not right. also a W-2 employee. Right. Um, in that situation, what would be best practice for taxes? Yeah, so you are required to report all of your income regardless of whether you get a 1099 or not. Um, so a lot of people are like, oh, I got cash. It never hit my right. bank. I don't have to report it. Uh, maybe that that you, know, you might not get caught, mm -hmm. but the, the letter of the law says that you're supposed to report anything that um, if it is independent contracting income, really anything over a few mm -hmm. hundred dollars, um, for the whole year. So, mm -hmm. so if you make less than like $400, you might not have to claim that, but anything over, you're going to have to, um, mm -hmm. like I said, you do get to, uh, reduce it by your expenses and things like that. Right. Same thing as a 1099. Like I don't get any 1099s in my, in my business because a lot of people, you have to make over $600 from a, somebody giving you money over $600 in order to give you a 1099 mm -hmm. for services. And a, a lot of my clients, you know, don't pay me over six hundred dollars. Uh, so it's a, uh, and they're per, they're individuals. They're not, you know, people that are own businesses. So they don't need to give me a ten ninety nine. Mm -hmm. I still have to report that income regardless. So Got it. yeah, okay, that is um, good to know. What are the <laughs> benefits of reporting all your income, even the ones that are earned by cash? Yeah, well, there's te technically no financial benefit <laughs> because you have to report more bills. <laughs> And pay taxes on it. Yeah. Right. Although you could say that, mm -hmm. remember, I talked about the Social Security and Medicare tax. Yes. So if you do have income, if you're zeroing out your income every year, you have no Social Security and Medicare tax that you're paying. So then you end up retiring and you go to claim Social Security and they go, well, you've never paid into the system, basically. Mm -hmm. So so that is one advantage every year. If you're if you do have some income, you're paying into Social Security and Medicare. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like uh, like I said, you're supposed to pay uh, all your cash income as well. You're supposed to report on your taxes. 
Um, whether it hits your bank account, whether or not, that's just the letter of the law. Mm -hmm. The advantage is that if the IRS found out for some reason, then they would, then they, if they audited your return and said, wait a minute, there's a lot of income here that's on, hit your bank account or what that's not being reported, then you're faced with uh, paying that tax plus penalties and interest and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So okay. but you have to find out first. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I want to say, so when my, I had my son, he's five. So I had him in 2018 uh -huh. and um, I was right going to apply for uh, maternity leave. And mm -hmm. then my manager at that time, she let me know about um, FMLA. Uh -huh. um, and then I was like, oh, I'm going to be paid. I like had no idea that I was going to be, be able to be paid while on maternity leave for three months. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that is when I first experienced the benefits of all these taxes. <laughs> right. um, at that time, leading up to my pregnancy, I, I was at the point where I had two jobs. Um, I was a W-2 employee for both jobs. So, uh, which was nice because uh, it, it was at the time too, where I was having additional uh, taxes taken out because I didn't want to be left owing. So right. then when I was given the amount of what I was going to be getting during my maternity leave, it was, it was a good amount. It was, you know, we were able to make ends meet. And I was like, I think this is one of the benefits. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you're right. Um, so another advantage in California, we, uh, we have SDI, which is state disability insurance. So that's another thing that you're paying for probably without even realizing it, that gets taken out of your checks. If you're a W2 employee, for those mm -hmm. that are independent contractors, they don't get the SDI. So mm. that, that FMLA that you're talking about would not have been offered to somebody who was self-employed or a 1099 independent contractor. So mm. it's another advantage of being an employee is that SDI you were referring to. Right. And a lot of times, so part of that SDI too, isn't even taxable because it's insurance. You're already paying mm. towards it. And then some of it is the FMLA portion is, uh, but it's only taxable to the feds, not the state. Um, yeah. But in any case, it's not so bad to pay taxes for exactly why you 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 experience there. I know you benefit from it. <laughs> so yes, yes, I was really grateful. Really grateful. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Yep. yeah. If we do not know how to fill a W four, yes. what is your suggestion that we do? And if you can explain a little bit too about what a W four is, that would be yeah. great. Yeah, that's um, you know this is a huge question that I always get from clients and non-clients, just people that are like, I don't know what to do. A lot of people have become clients because they don't know how to fill out a W-4. Yeah. Uh, so a W-4 tells the government, uh, uh, specifically the IRS, this is my situation on taxes. So this is how much you should be withholding. The employer should be withholding from my check. Then the employer gets that, collects that taxes that you get taken out of your check and they pay the government on your behalf based on what you tell them on that W-4. The employer will not give you advice typically about how to fill out that W-4 though, because they don't know your situation either. So the people that really give the advice is me, or if you're doing your own taxes, it's you. You have to figure it out um, a lot of times, uh, which can be it can be tough. Um, so the advice is it take, a, take a long time with it. <laughs> so you either have to fill out, they have all these different worksheets and all this. It's pages and pages and pages of worksheets that you can go through. Um, so if you're not getting professional tax help, then that's really your option is to go through and take your time with it. Uh, don't just check a box and move on because you could end up owing at the end of the year and be surprised. Mm -hmm. I've had people who have accidentally claimed exempt on their taxes because they thought that was the right thing to do. They earn $70,000 and then have a huge, they didn't have any taxes taken out all year because wow. they can't exempt. You don't want to do that. <laughs> don't <Right>. do that. <laughs> Non-exempt. Yes, yes. yes. Not, don't click the box for exempt. Uh, no. But the, um, the it's important to get that right because, again, you're ending up in a situation like we were talking about earlier where you're owing money. Um, maybe you're having too much taken out as well, but that's not as usually as concerning for people as having a big tax bill at the end of the year. Um, so, so yeah, take your time with it, go through it carefully. If you're married, um, get your spouse as well to fill when and you get a new job, you mm -hmm. want your spouse to also fill out another one for their job, um, mm -hmm. because they work in tandem with each other, mm -hmm. um, and you fill them out together. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tricky because there's a little box that says if there's more than one income or if you're married. Um, yeah. And the other thing, if you're married and both of you have significant incomes, like, you know, you're each contributing separately to the household similarly, mm -hmm. then it might not be best to, to check the box for married filing joint. I know mm -hmm. everybody thinks, oh, I'm married, I'm filing joint, so I need to check that box. Well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But sometimes checking that box for single is better mm -hmm. because then they're going to take out taxes enough for you and your spouse is going to have them take out enough taxes for them. So each of you is is doing your share if you check the box for single. If yeah. you check the box for married filing joint, then it's taking out taxes like yours is the only income right. for both of you. So. Yeah. So in any case, it's confusing, and I hope that made sense. <laughs> but <laughs> that's why we go to tax experts like you. Yes, exactly. And then <laughs> that's my other work. my other thing is forget it and just come to <laughs> go to some. Yes, I <laughs> I can't remember last time I updated my W four. So yeah, yeah, uh, we'll be talking soon about that <laughs> yeah, too. <there> you go. <laughs> For sure. Oh man, the oh, last question. Yeah. Can you, which will be me too, because I need to file my taxes. It's <laughs> sure, yeah. I, I was thinking October 15th, but it's October 17th. October 16th. Yeah, right between. <laughs> yeah, okay. October okay. 16th. We in October California got an extra extra amount of time this year because of the flooding and all that. So the IRS and state both pushed the deadline to October 16th. Got so it. To pay and everybody can rest easy, although that's coming up in about a month. So a month yes, and a half. I know, I need bit. to get this stuff together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, walk us through the process if someone were to use your services. Yeah. Why a local, um, and you've said this a couple times in the infomercials, which is which kind of lit a light bulb with me because I've used I've done our own taxes from with TurboTax, yeah, Google. Yeah. I know not best practice. And then when I started to hear your infomercials, you really, um, you know, educated me on why the benefits of why a local tax agent, why, you know, to go locally rather than using a platform like that. Um, yeah. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, the thing, programs like TurboTax and H&R Block has an online one. There's a free tax USA. There's a whole bunch of them out there now that are on, these online sort of filing services. And, you know, they, they can be good. Like it's, it's better than filling out a form by hand <laughs> so, yeah. um, because you can put in your W-2. And if, if you really just have a W-2 and that's it, it might be a good solution for you. It's going to be a little bit less expensive than using our services. Um, but I would still inquire about it because you might be surprised at how little you pay for a, even a simple tax return for somebody like me to do it um, versus versus TurboTax. Actually, they've been raising their prices so much that I'm, I'm pretty close. <laughs> I'm not yeah. too far away from them. But yeah, the main advantage is, well, we talked about even like W-4 assistance. So um, even if you're just a, just W-2 and that's all you have on your taxes and that's it, you have no dependents, no other, anything else. Uh, having that W-4 assistance, if you were to change jobs or you get a you get a promotion at work or, you know, something happens, um, all those changes are usually the best reason to use a tax person because mm -hmm. somebody like me sits in your back pocket. Like if you have, if you need help throughout the year, you can reach out and say, hey, I, I changed jobs. Hey, I'm getting married or we've got a baby on the way. Uh, how is, are all these things going to affect your taxes? TurboTax won't do that for you. <laughs> you no yeah. matter how hard you try, and at, you can you can talk to the the computer screen as much as you want, but it's not. Yeah. Gonna <laughs> it's, so, it's not going to talk back to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like answers. <laughs> so I mean, that's really the advantage. Off season is just having having somebody there, like I said, in your back pocket to be able to answer these questions for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and then during the season to actually get the returns done. Um, just maintaining accuracy and making sure that things are done correctly. Um, there's over 75,000 pages of tax code, and I don't even profess to know all of those. <laughs> but um, it's it's navigating those little ins and outs of things to where even we might be able to say, oh, you you know, we can we can do this for you, which saves you 200 bucks. Hey, it's 200 bucks that pays for my fee, you know, <laughs> or um, those sorts of things can they happen all the time. Yeah. Um, and if you have any layer of complexity, like if you're a 1099 person or a just self-employed in general, you have rental properties, you have investment properties, 
um, even kids, uh, the college credits for, for um, adult children and um, dependent care credits and all of that sort of a thing can be can be tricky on uh, right. yourself, even even with a program that's it, it, it. TurboTax is good at what it does. Yeah, uh, but even a program that's as good as what it does, it still can't ask those questions sometimes. Right, <laughs> so, right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that would that would mostly be it. Um, and uh, it's good to have somebody in your corner. So yes, for sure. Yeah. So basically, if we signed up with you, mm -hmm. we are able to. We have access to you. Yeah, that's it. The, <laughs> And wow. and I I'm always available. This is all I do, even though you know my busy season is three months out of the year, <laughs> January, yeah. April usually. Right. I, throughout the year, this is all I do: answering emails, answering phone calls, doing all of that for just that reason. Um, yeah. And we do have extension clients and things like that. And not not every year do we get this weird six months. Right. I know. <laughs> yeah, so this year's like bonus year. Yeah, it it is. It's yeah. a little bit bonus time for us. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, but but it is access to to somebody oh. year round. So yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, that was my last question. Do you have anything else to add? No, I think I think we covered a lot. A I lot think we did too. We're like boom, boom, boom. boom. Yeah. I always say because of our infomercials, you know, yeah. we have 30 seconds to say what we need to say about our business. Uh, yeah. I kind of talk fast too. Uh-huh. And I have to teach myself to slow down. I know. So, uh, but I, we did I've spent cover a long time doing that. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, well, thank you so much, Justin. Thank you for your yeah. time and for okay. sharing uh, very resourceful information. I will have Justin's business website linked in the comment section below. Uh, for those of you who are interested in uh, signing up or needing text help, feel free to reach out to Justin. I will be using Justin personally myself for my W-4 as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, and and I'd like to say also, even if you're not looking for tax, uh, you know, somebody to prepare your taxes right now, feel free to reach out. I'll extend that invitation to anybody watching uh, to you can go on my website my email is right on the website uh, that's always the best way to get a hold of me if you have a quick question or anything like that I'd love to hear it and I'm happy to answer it for you so sounds good thank you so much no problem at all thank you take care all right you too See you soon bye-bye